Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We're excited that you're joining us as we discuss the importance of professional mentors and leadership development throughout your board service. My name is Molly Nordgren and I'm the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Nursing for the College of Health Professions at Western Governors University. I'm thrilled to be joined today by Kim Harper from the Nurses on Boards Coalition, also known as NOBC. WGU is, a prou is proud to be a founding sponsor of NOBC, which works to build healthier communities through the service of nurses on corporate, health-related, and other boards. During today's webinar, Kim will tell us more about NOBC, its mission, and how you can get involved. We will also hear from a WGU student named Amy Brunson, who will share her experience as a nurse serving on a board. She and I will talk about the importance of leadership development and the impact that professional mentors have had in her board service. And lastly, we will open up a Q&A portion at the end of the webinar for you to ask us questions. Throughout today's discussion, if you have questions, I invite you to type them into the chat box located in the bottom right corner of your screen. We will be answering questions at the end of the webinar. Let's go ahead and get started because we have a lot of great information to cover. I'm thrilled to introduce you to Kim Harper. With nearly 40 years of healthcare experience, Kim currently serves as the Chief Executive Officer for the Indiana Center of Nursing. Kim also serves as Chair of the Board of Directors of the National Nurses on Boards Coalition, which unites over 25 national nursing organizations towards the goal of improving the healthcare of our nation through the service of 10,000 nurses on boards by the year 2020. Let's go ahead and get started. Kim, please tell us a little bit more about NOBC. Well, good morning, everyone. I am delighted to have the opportunity to be with you this morning, and thank you so much, Molly, for the lovely introduction. I can tell you that the Nurses on Boards Coalition is an amazing organization, and it's an initiative that has just become rampant across the United States and actually globally over the last few years. And it's truly my honor to serve as the chairman of the board of directors of the Nurses on Boards Coalition. So just to kind of begin the story and have everybody understand how it came about, I know that you're all very familiar with the Future of Nursing Leading Change Advancing Health book that came out about 10 years ago from the Institute of Medicine, now the Academies of Medicine. And in that book, there were recommendations that were made. You know, it was a, just a landmark um, report about how nursing could actually improve healthcare through specific recommendations, that if nursing followed those recommendations, that positive improvements would be made. One of those recommendations was actually IOM recommendation number seven, and it was to prepare and enable nurses to lead change and to advance health. And with that, you can see on the slide, it was defined further as nurses and nursing educational programs and associations should prepare the nursing workforce to assume leadership positions across all levels, while in at the same time, public, private, and governmental healthcare decision makers should ensure that leadership positions are available to and filled by nurses. So when we were thinking about how we could take that forward to turn it into something larger, which we did with all of the recommendations um, from the Institute of Medicine report back then, it was really felt strongly that one way of doing that was to bring the nursing voice to the tables where decisions are being made for healthcare all over America. And so at that point in time, the Center to Champion Nursing in America brought together individuals that were leaders of nursing organizations. And that particular um, event that first day was held and um, hosted by Susan Hassmiller from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and Susan Reinhardt from the um, Center to Champion Nursing in America, which is housed at AARP. And on that first day, 21 nursing leaders were brought into Washington, D.C. to talk about this and to really have a conversation as to how could we potentially work together to truly make a difference. And I was honored to be there at that very first meeting. At that point in time, I was the current at that time, president of the National Forum of State Nursing Workforce Centers, which was one of the 21 organizations that was brought together by Sue and Susan to have this conversation. And these organizations were all the big nursing organizations that you would expect. Um, the ANA, the American Organization of Nurse Executives then, Leaders Now, 
um, the NLN, AAC, and Sigma, you know, all, all the big various organizations, and also the minority representation of the minority nurses associations. And so we were all there for a full day. And, you know, we had these great conversations about knowing that we as presidents of the board, or sometimes the people who were there were the paid staff, the executive director of the organization, we, ha we had this conversation about we all have these strategic plans and we all have 50 things that we're all doing, but could we add one more thing? And if we were able to add that one more thing, what could it look like? And could we actually work together in a way that nursing in our profession had never done to bring one specific organized effort to the forefront? And that being to get the nurse's voice on boards where decisions are being made regarding health care. And so those groups were sent back to um, all, each one of us as representatives to our boards and our groups and the respective nursing organizations. And we talked about, you know, is this something our organization would be interested in doing? And then we were brought back again um, in the summer, um, early summer, had a further discussion. And then we started talking about what would it look like? You know, what would we call it? You know, what would it be um, an organization of its own? What would it be a coalition, which is what we settled on, that it should just be a coalition at that point in time, which it, it remains a coalition, but a very organized one at this point in time. And then in the fall, we came back again with a strategic plan, so to speak. A steering committee had been um, selected during that summer meeting who were charged with putting together a strategic plan, and that was brought back in um, the early fall. And at that point, we all agreed to that plan. We took it back to our respective organizations for votes that says who's in, who's out. And then at that point in time, we all came back together um, in November of 2014. Every single one of those original 21 members said we're in and we want to be involved in this. And at that point, we launched the Nurses on Boards Coalition. Again, that was in 2014. And I can tell you since that time, we have grown by leaps and bounds. Um, as we move into um, the current state of Nurses on Boards, I can tell you that our mission has never changed. The Nurses on Boards um, Coalition mission is to improve the health of communities and the nation through the service of nurses on boards and other governing bodies. That's what it's all about. That's what we strive for. Everything that we do at the Nurses on Boards Coalition is toward this goal. And the reason for that is that we believe that nurses bring a unique set of skills to the table. It's not that the other set of skills that other individuals bring are not important, but it is important that nurses are at the table with the skills that we bring. And it's interesting that in many times and for almost every situation, the competencies that board governance organizations are looking for in a successful board member are also the competencies that are possessed by nurses. So it's a perfect match. And it's interesting that within our healthcare systems across the nation, our hospital and healthcare systems, we have data from the American Hospital Association that shows that literally less than 5% of the health and hospital um, organizations across our country have a nurse on their board with a vote. Now that doesn't mean that the chief nursing officer or the chief nursing executive is not in that room because he or she usually almost always is, and able to uh, provide information and to provide support, to provide data. However, in most instances, the nurse does not have a vote on that board. And we do know that less than 5% of the boards across America do have a nurse with a, voice, with a vote on that board. Interestingly, on the other hand, physicians represent a 100% of organizations such as hospital health systems with a physician with a vote. So it's not that we think in any way that physician's voice is not important. It absolutely is. But we also think and believe with all of our hearts that nurses bring a set of skills to the table that nobody else really brings. You know, many organizational boards are made up of bankers, you know, and um, financial people, business people, um, philanthropists, you know, in an organization or in um, the community in which they serve. Um, and they all bring an excellent acumen, you know, of skills to the table, but none of those individuals bring the same set of skills that a nurse would bring. So in Moving forward with our mission, you know, we believed that there were some strategies that we probably need to undertake in order to get to this goal, with our goal always being to improve health. 
And one of those big strategies was that we felt that it would be great if we could have 10,000 seats filled by nurses on boards and commissions um, across our country by 2020. It's a lofty goal, you know, and it, and it started slowly because we kind of had to get the word out and we had to build the momentum. And I can tell you that the momentum has been built and it is moving rapidly now and we're excited about that. Currently, we can tell you that, and as this slide share shows, and this was when this data was given to create this PowerPoint presentation, at that point, we were 6,056 board seats filled by nurses, and today, we are at 6,216, so just in a week or so, that has changed that drastically. You know, every time we go out and talk about this, we get more nurses like all of you excited about this work. And, and we do know that there are so many, many nurses in America who are currently already serving on boards, but we don't know it. They have not been entered into the database yet. So that's one of our big charges and one of our real uh, requests from all of you today to do that. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in a little bit. And we also know that over 10,000 nurses in America want to serve on a board, but they don't currently do that. We also know that for over 14,000 nurses are in our Nurses on Boards database today, and we can communicate with them on a regular basis. And it's all about communicating, getting people to understand the need, to understand the ability to achieve great things if we all work together. But each individual nurse has a voice at some table in this country. And if we can get the right nurse to the right table at the right time, we're gonna make a difference in healthcare across our country. If we talk about the initiatives um, of our Nurses on Boards Coalition, um, we have a, a set of strategic imperatives. And again, each one of these strategic imperatives that were um, created by our board of directors and the members of our organization all work together to serve the mission. And again, reminding everyone that our mission is to improve the health of the communities and the nation through the service of nurses on boards and commissions and appointments. So the first one of our strategic imperatives is to facilitate board placements. You know, obviously it, it takes a little help sometimes to get the right nurse on the right board at the right time. And so we have a work group that's very devoted to working on facilitating board placements. We have to identify them. You know, where are board opportunities? And so we're networking with individuals all across the country and actually internationally a bit now to find board opportunities. That happens at the national level and at the state level and on the local levels. You know, within my particular state, I'm from Indiana and I know we have a Western governors at in Indiana and we love it and we work, I work very closely with it. I love the colleagues that I have here in Indiana. And in Indiana, what we have done is we have replicated the Nurses on Boards Coalition at the state level. And so it's exciting to know that, you know, we have actually, we just calculated it yesterday, we have a goal, we had set a goal. Every state was given a goal as to how many nurses in their state it would take if we all got to our goal, we'd be at the 10,000. And I can, I'm proud to say that Indiana, as of yesterday, was at a 192% of our goal. So we've almost doubled our goal in Indiana. And the way that we've done that is that we have people that are involved all over our state. We have replicated the Nurses on Boards Coalition. So today we have 29 national nursing organizations and groups as members at the national level of Nurses on Boards. And we have invited the state or chapter affiliate chapter within the state of Indiana to also participate at the state level. And so we have people that are out there working with the United Way agencies, trying to find board opportunities, and then we can share them with the individuals who are have placed themselves in the database at the national level. And that information is presented to us and shared with us. And we can communicate with the individuals that are looking for board placement, what board opportunities are out there and create those matches. That's one of the things that's really important. We've got to work with individuals to find out what they're interested in. And so one of the things when we ask individuals to complete the database, a creative personal profile in the Nurses on Boards Coalition database, we ask questions. And so those questions are to enable us to help you find the right board if you want to be um, looked at and considered for certain organizations and certain kinds of boards. So that's one of the the strategic imperatives. A second one is creating an organization focused on transformative growth. 
I think it's fair to say that we're, we are pretty right on that one. This organization continues to grow. Um, we have gone from originally 21 organizations. We're now at 29. You know, we have strategic partners all across the country. You know, the numbers of organizations that have stepped up to the plate, like Western Governors, that says we support the work of the Nurses on Boards Coalition. We believe in this mission, too. And we think this is an excellent way that nurses can serve as leaders across our nation and in their own communities. So this is something that I think is exciting. You know, we are asked to speak. Um, the executive director is Lori Benson, and you'll have her contact information at the end of the, the uh, presentation today. And she and I were, and our board work very closely with organizations across the country, and we are asked to speak regularly. I mean, we don't go a month without three or four speaking opportunities at the national level or international level, uh, moving this work forward. And so it's great to be able to get that word out there. And we know by the amount of invitations that we're getting and by the numbers that continue to increase on our um, database that we are truly creating a transformative um, organization. One of the things you know, that I, I failed to mention is that when we originally began our organization, we were um, gifted from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation almost $300,000 to kick this work off. So it was a grant that was provided to us to um, develop the program and, and move it forward. Since that time, we have um, been able to identify individuals and organizations, one of those being Western Governors, um, to be able to assist us with funding. And today, um, we are proud to say that we have to date raised over a million dollars for the purposes of moving this work forward and to create the programs and services that are needed to do this nationwide. So it's, it's really exciting to see how this has grown. The third one is promoting collaboration among states and national organizations to integrate strategies. You know, and as we said, our member organizations are the large organizations across the country for nursing and healthcare, and they have their national um, conferences, you know, they have newsletters that go out nationally to all of their members across the country. They have many ways that they um, can communicate work with their membership. And one of the things that they have been beautiful to do is to have a session or um, a speaker about nurses on boards at those conferences and to share information through their databases and their newsletters with all of their members at the national level. And in addition, you know, we have state work going on all the time. Also within the state organizations, the affiliates and chapters of those national organizations, it filters down to them and they're very busily doing the individual things within their state, as well as the Nurses on Boards Coalition has actually created a state contact for all 50 states and the District of Columbia. So each one of our states and each state that you live in has an individual who stepped up the plate and said, I'll be the state contact for our state. And it's that person's responsibility to work with colleagues within that state and bring people to the table to help organize the efforts of the nurses on boards work at the state level. Many of those um, folks either are in one of the many member organizations and they could be somebody who's representing the nurses association at the state level or the state um, Center for Nursing, or the uh, League for Nursing, or the Organization of Nurse Leaders. It, it's very different in each state, but it's wonderful that the Nurses on Boards Coalition database, when it is, and people enter in their information into the database, that information, as long as they check yes, I want to receive more information about Nurses on Boards Coalition, and if you're new to us and you're going to do that, hopefully by the, at the end of this um, webinar today, that you'll go in and enter your own information into that database that we'll tell you how to do in a little bit. When you do that, we want to make sure that you say, check at the end, I want to receive more information from Nurses on Boards. I promise you, you won't be inundated by things, but if you don't check that box, we won't be able to ever communicate with you. We'll have your information, but we won't be able to communicate back with you. So caution in that particular area. But the information that is there is sorted into states. And so the state contact, and for, I'm the state contact in Indiana, which obviously makes sense, that information is shared with the state contact for everybody that's in their state that currently serves on a board and what the board is and where it is and what it's about. And then also those who want to serve on a board but don't currently do that. And we also have a group of individuals that currently serve on boards, but they want to serve on another board. 
So that information is shared at the state level with the state contact so that we can do the matches that are referred to uh, in the first um, imperative where we talked about uh, facilitating board placement. So there's a lot of opportunity to get folks involved and, and it all starts with making sure that your information is in our Nurses on Boards Coalition database. The fourth um, imperative is demonstrating the impact of Nurses on Boards. You know, we all have these wonderful stories, you know, of impact. And, and my, one of my very favorite stories is a staff nurse at the staff nurse level, a male um, father um, in a community was um, somewhat interested in getting involved, but a little shaky, didn't know for sure if it was what he wanted to do at the time. And as the story goes, his wife talked him into joining the board of the um, baseball league for youth sports in the community. And that particular person, though he was not real comfortable walking in, became very comfortable very quickly, sharing his concern about some of the safety issues that they had with this baseball league, this community baseball league. And so as it is, this is true, within three months of this person's service on this board, the nurse, they had changed their helmets to safer helmets and they had more of them so that they weren't passing, you know, the helmets and head lice from player to player to player, as you can imagine. And they also changed their bats to safer bats that didn't break as easily and fly off into the wind and the um, people who were watching the game and the players. And they also um, created the opportunity to have an AED on site for every game. And for somebody who's a grandparent who gets very excited at my kids game, my grandkids games, I think that's a wonderful idea. And so I, it's a very clear to me that that creates a culture of health in that community. Those are major changes within the safety of that particular community within that baseball league. And that would not have happened if the staff nurse registered nurse, young millennial had not gone onto that board. And so we often think, you know, that board service is hospital boards or, you know, great big, you know, 501c3 um, or, or fortune 500 companies, you know, where they pay somebody to serve on their board. Well, yes, those are opportunities. They're not as plentiful, uh, but those are opportunities. But there are so many opportunities at the state and at the local community level for nurses to serve on not-for-profit boards. You know, we're talking about things like the neighborhood association or places of faith and worship, and your church, your place of worship, your PTA, you know, the, an organization that's raising money for pediatric cancer or the Humane Society or anything like that. Those are absolutely places where decisions are made by those boards that reflect and change the culture of health of our communities. And we need the voice of nursing at all of those tables. So in order to really look at the impact of that, it's, it's become a little, it's a little harder than we think. And some of you may be nurse researchers and we are very pleased and proud to have several wonderful nurse researchers involved in this particular aspect of our work. So we have an impact work group that is really looking at research on how do we prove it? You know, we have these wonderful stories like I just shared and we, we ask nurses to share their story and share their testimonial on our website. And we're gonna ask you to do that as well if you serve on the board. But those are all anecdotal, you know, they're, they're qualitative. And so we're trying to figure out the absolute best way that we can actually prove by data that having the nursing voice at the table truly makes a difference. And so we're excited um, to move this work forward. This will just be the first of what we think will be many studies to be able to do that. But, you know, it's interesting when we, we know that there are nurses there, the nurse brought this particular data or this particular um, story and data, which is the best way to do it, to the table and a decision was made in a positive way that reflects a change in the culture of health. It, it, it's hard to prove that that was done, that decision was made only because the nurse brought that, but we are determined we're going to find a way. You know, we believe that executive directors and board chairs of organizations can clarify that they can say indeed this decision would not have been made you know without that particular nurse so how we quantify that is yet to be seen but we're starting on it and we're really excited about finding a way that we can actually provide data that will prove what we're doing is important work 
And the last but not least is developing member synergy and strategy um, and value for all of our members. So as I said, we have 29 member organizations. It's important that they be involved and that they um, are a part of everything that we do and that positive comes back to their organizations from all of the time and the, and the resources that they commit to the Nurses on Boards Coalition. And the same with our funders and our sponsors. It's important to us that they get as much out of it as they give or more, because that's the only way that we're all going to be successful. Next thing I wanna share a little bit about is our website. And our Nurses on Boards Coalition website is nursesonboardscoalition.org, um, and that'll be on the next slide. But if you go to that website, there are a tremendous amount of resources available to you there. All for, you know, they're free. There are some offerings that you would have to go um, into um, something and, and pay for, but you don't have to pick those. There are lots and lots of free offerings available to you. We have all the overview documents that explain all the details of the Nurses on Boards Coalition, you know, how we became from just this beginning struggling organization funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation um, dollars to, you know, an independent entity. We are a business entity. We are our own 501c3 now. You know, we have paid time, two full-time paid staff. It's been um, a tremendous um, opportunity to see the Nurse on Boards Coalition grow to what it's become today. And all of that information is available on our website. Also, um, as I said, educational offerings available to you. There are board readiness tools. If you're not sure exactly if you're ready or at what level you're ready, um, these tools are available to you to ascertain if and which board's right for you. Um, and are you prepared today in the way that you'd like to be? And if not, how we can help you achieve competencies or build on competencies that you don't feel are quite as strong as you'd like for them to be today. Um, there's a mock video, um, a video, mock board meeting video there. So you can watch a board. Maybe you've never attended a board meeting um, in any way. And it's kind of scary to think about joining a board when you've never seen or watched a board meeting. I can tell you there's, there's one there. You can also Google them on YouTube. You can find some really good ones that were very well organized. And you can find some that you can probably find some things that ought to be changed if you were on that board. And so it's important um, to get that opportunity for people to examine what's out there and what you'd actually be getting into if you join a board. There are links to member and partner organizations there. Um, there's a get on board process tool that's there for you um, and for you to utilize. And then lots of nurse stories of board service um, are on our website and so many, many more things are there. You know, and I think in addition to the great resources that we have available on the NOBC website, I can't overemphasize um, the help that mentors bring. And though our board, our website doesn't really provide that today, your community does and your school does, your alma mater does. You know, there are people in your world that currently or previously have served on boards and you can learn so much from them. So I encourage you so strongly to pick up one of those individuals and talk to them, pull them under your wing or let them pull you under, under their wing and learn from them. You know, when we talk about nurses' competencies, one of the things that sometimes nurses think they're not really the expert at is finances. And then people kind of balk at that a little bit. But, you know, I believe strongly that we all as adults, um, we handle our own personal finances. You know, and the secret to finances is you got to have more coming in than you got going out. Or are you going to get in trouble? And that's no different with a board. And so the finances of a board, you know, they may look a little different in their profit and loss sheets or the documentation that they share with the board. But you can learn that. And that's a perfect example of what a mentor can share with you. They can walk you through that and so that it makes total sense to you. You know, and I would encourage people to think you don't have to be an expert in every competency in order to be a positive, successful member of a board. You bring so much to the table that others don't. Let those finance people be the experts. You know, Let the bankers be the experts in where money should be invested and how it should be invested. That's not necessarily what we bring to the table that's more important. It may be more important that we can bring to the table cultural competency and making sure that people are treated well in our communities and making sure that there aren't food deserts or that you know pets are vaccinated or whatever the case may be. Nurses bring that particular skills and those skills to the table when others don't. So never be afraid to ask someone for help. 
you know, I encourage you to, to find a mentor or be a mentor at whichever level you are at this particular time in your career. So we might ask, what can you do now? You know, and, and that's what I always ask. I'm sitting, I listen to somebody talk and pontificate like it probably seems I'm doing right now. But I think you can hopefully tell that I have a passion for this and I truly believe in this. And I think that each and every one of us can make a huge difference in the communities that we serve and improving the health of our communities. And so if we think about what you can do, I beg you to step up and be counted. If you serve on a board now, let us know that. Let us count the boards that you serve towards that 10,000. You know, we want to know that. It's important that we do that. The Nurses on Boards Coalition website is there, nursesonboardscoalition.org. Encourage you to go to that. And when you do, you will see that it'll ask you, um, there'll be two buttons, a red button and a, and a green. I think they're red and green at the top of my head. Um, but the, you push on the button that says, yes, I serve and I want to be counted. And when you do that, it will take you into the database and there will be required fields like your name and your address and what you do, where you work um, and your interests. There are also um, some re fields in there that are not required, one of which is your political affiliation. And I would say, share that with you, not that it would frighten you and you would think, what do they care about my political affiliation? And so I and always want to share that that's not a required field. However, if you have aspirations to serve on state appointed boards um, or commissions at the state level, most of those boards at the state level are filled by X amount of people who claim to be Democratic uh, and X amount of people who claim to be Republican and X amount of people who claim to be independent. And so your ability to get on one of those kinds of boards may very well make a difference by which particular political party that you um, say that you you share the values of. And so again, it's not a required field. You can just skip it and go over it if you would like to. But it's important that you share the information that will allow us to get back in touch with you to help you match up with boards um, that you would like to serve on perhaps in the future. Another thing we'd encourage you to do is encourage your colleagues to register. You know, I I'm talking with all of you today, and I'm gonna answer your questions hopefully here in just a few minutes. But also if you could share this information with your colleagues, just when you talk, I know we're all pretty nurse centric. We, you know, we hang out with nurses, you know, our friends are nurses, we work with nurses, you know, even my, my daughter's a nurse, you know, all my friends. We all are become a bit too nurse centric sometimes. So I would encourage you when you're in those meetings and when you're having dinner or you're out for cocktails with your nurse colleagues, Encourage them to register themselves in the Nurses on Board's website and share their information as well and let us communicate with them and let us count this, the boards that they serve on. Another one is sharing your story. Um, on our website, we have the ability to share the story, share the story of how you got to a board and the intrinsic value that you get out of that and the difference that you've made by bringing your voice to that particular table of that organization. You can also contact a local nonprofit or another organization um, to see would they be willing um, to share that information um, with they, within their board to may perhaps like to have a nurse come onto their board. And I can tell you from our experience in Indiana working with the United Way, they have been a tremendous partner. Their board, so many of the not-for-profit um, United Way agencies in our area, they kind of struggle for board members. They don't often have a full board and they almost always have seats open. They are thrilled to have the thought of a nurse, a well-educated you know, nurse at any level, come onto their board to share um, the expertise and to be able to bring what they bring to the table and to help make the decisions at that board table. So if you know organizations, encourage them to bring a, a nurse onto their board. And then also engaging in your state, um, whatever state you live in. And if I, we can tell you if you want to contact us, our information is at the end. And you want to know who's the state contact in my state. Certainly we can find that, we, we have that list and we can provide that information to you to connect you with the state contact in the state in which you live and work. You know, if you're, like I said, if you're Indiana, it's me and my information is at the end and I'm happy to help. And I know all of our state contacts would be very help, happy to help you along the way. And the last one is making a contribution or encouraging others to do likewise. There's a button on our website that allows people to um, share information 
Um, and, and if they want to share a financial support, they can do that as well. So there's a, a donate to us opportunity on our website if it should be something that you would be interested in doing. So as we bring this section of the webinar to a close, I just really want to thank you. I want to thank you um, for everything that you do every single day in your communities and across our nation. Nurses are very strong individuals. I've never been prouder in my life to be a nurse. And as you saw, uh, heard from my uh, bio, I've been one for a very long time. And I am delighted to you know, be in the senior days of my career and to have the ability to work so closely with such wonderful individuals as the folks that I work with on the Nurses on Boards Coalition. We are here to help you. We want to mentor you. We want to provide anything that we can to help you on your journey, not only to the boardroom, but beyond. You know, and as I think about the work that we've done in this initiative, we have brought people to the boardroom. And we've also brought them beyond the boardroom because it's not always about where you serve um, or what organization you're involved with. It's what you learn and it's what you bring to the table. And nurses have that intrinsic ability to bring chaos, you know, turn chaos into something that's well planned or to use the strategic planning process or the the nursing process to work people through issues and we can come we can get consensus so often from with nurses that are not it just doesn't happen when a nurse isn't at the table so i encourage you to really think about this um, get involved if you can again remember to register yourself in our nobc database on our website I encourage your colleagues and friends to do the same our contact information is here on this screen um, I'm Kimberly Harper, um, as um, Molly shared, and um, Lori Benson is our executive director. Her information follows that, and I think she's listening on this call today. And if you were interested, um, if you go to the bottom row, I am the third from the left in the black dress with the long strand of pearls. That's Kimberly Harper. And two over from me in the black jacket and the white glass, going to the right, is Lori Benson. And she's our executive director. And we are surrounded by member representatives of our organizations that are members of the Nurses on Boards. And on behalf of all of them, I thank you for your personal commitment. I thank you for everything that you do for the health of our communities across our nation. And please know that we're here to help you in any, any way that we can. And with that, I will turn it over to Molly talk about our featured story. Thank you, Kim. I want to acknowledge we're having some technical issues. So Kim, if you could please mute where we think that that might be helpful. Um, and we will bring you back when we get to q and I want to now uh, share with you a video. I had the opportunity to sit down with Amy Brunson the other day to learn more about her experience as a nurse serving on a board. We had a great discussion in preparation for today's webinar to help provide all of you with examples and insights into the importance of leadership development and professional mentors during your own board service. So let's watch. Thank you so much for joining us today, Amy. We are thrilled to have the time to sit down with you and learn more about your experience serving on a board. Our objective for today's discussion is that we will help those who are already serving on a board to have the tools and information necessary to continue their service and persist in service for years to come. You not only attend WGU, but you've learned leadership qualities that have helped you in your career from serving on boards. So let's start there. How long have you been serving on a board? And if you don't mind sharing, what board did you do you serve on and in what capacity? So I have um, served on the board of directors for the Association of Perioperative Nurses, um, AORN. It's our local chapter board. Um, I've been on that for about six years and I've served in different capacities from board of directors to president. And I've been doing that for quite a little time. Great. What got you started in, in that organization? Um, so I'm an operating room nurse by trade, and that's um, the organization that supports me as a nurse. And uh, I started in that organization because it provides great opportunities for me in my career. And so I joined um, thinking to help, pursue my, help me advance my career. And um, 
getting involved just by attending meetings and you know sharing my voice i was asked to uh, step onto the board and i took a leap of faith and just did it <laughs> that's great so you said you've been on the board for six years how long were you part of the organization before you were asked to join the board um probably about a year I, i've been a member for about eight years and was probably active for about a year or so, year and a half before elections came up and I was asked to join as a board member. So Amy, tell us uh, what leadership qualities you've seen in uh, the members of the board that you've served with. Um, so some of the leadership qualities I've seen and have um, been fortunate enough to gain is um, organizational skills has been key. I'm just trying to stay on task and making sure that all of the different pieces are um, moving and stay together. I'm also seeing um, how important communication is, not only with um, the members, but with the other board members to make sure that everybody's doing their job and that um, nothing gets dropped. Um, I've also noticed that there's a lot of commitment to this. Um, so you can't just be present half the time. You really have, it's almost like a full-time job. Um, and you kind of have to love it to be able to do it and do it well. So. so tell us a little bit more about that time commitment and how do you organize your time so that you, you can commit what you need to your job, your profession, and also to the organization? So there is a little time commitment with, um, I try to spend some time every week on it. Um, there's meetings every month, except in the summertime because we take a little break. We, um, make sure that you know the members know that it's happening and that all the preparations and agenda are in place uh, and then we have board meetings two to three times a year just to make sure that our goals for our chapter are being met and what needs to be done to help with that um, i try to not do anything at work um, i try to keep that separate from uh, this separate from my work time um, and i do try to work around my home schedule so that it's not interfering with my family um, or commitments there. Um, and it's a little juggling act, but I like to be busy so it works well with me. <laughs> That's great. I think a lot of nurses are the same. We like to have a lot on our plate. And I'm Absolutely. glad to hear that uh, you can you can actually do all of this and, and still maintain that work-life balance that you want. Uh, tell us about your experience with professional mentorship. Do you have a mentor? And what part did he or she play in helping you to get involved in board service? Um, so I definitely have a mentor. Um, I've known her since I started my career as a nurse in the operating room. Um, she was actually my educator and who hired me in my current uh, facility. And um, she's been an active member of AORN for 20 plus years, um, served in several capacities in our local chapter. And she's actually the current president of the National AORN. Um, she encouraged me first to just join AOR and come see what it's about. Um, and then after attending some meetings, she said, hey, why don't you join the board of directors? And uh, I'm a little concerned about the time commitment, but she said, oh, it's no big deal. We'll help you work through it. Um, and she's been a great support just by answering questions or giving me resources when needed. Here's how to set up an agenda or to run a meeting. Um, she gives me great reminders about when I need to do stuff. So um, she's been a big help in one person, me pursuing my career with ARN, but also just in my career as a nurse. That's amazing. She sounds like she's been an integral part of your professional development. What have you learned from um, your mentor in terms of how you mentor or support uh, mentees? Um, so I think I've learned that you have to really be involved with your mentor and you have to have the same goals. You have to have somebody similar to you. You have to have somebody that has the same wants, the same goals, the same desires. And um, just by having that personal connection that I know, I know about my mentor, I know about their kids, um, about their family. And so you have, you can connect and really find ways to help them, um, help them grow. And then just by being available anytime, any day give me a call, you know, that seems to work great. Right? That's great. It sounds like you have a great relationship with your mentor. So tell us about the career benefits that you've experienced in serving on a board. I would say I've, um, I've experienced some career benefits. When I started AORN, I was kind of just looking to 
you know, serve a couple of years to get it on my resume to kind of move on. And um, after joining, um, I decided that I really enjoy it. So I um, decided to join some committees in the department, in the operating room. And after doing that for a little bit of time, I was asked to serve on a committee for a hospital. So it involved other nurses and other departments. And it was a brand new committee. And after a little bit of time, they were looking for somebody to chair it. And since I had experience as a director at AORN, um, I felt like I could really do well in that role. I knew how to create agendas and to run meetings and to really get up and speak in front of large groups because that's something you have to do as a leader. And so I think that really helped me to branch out into the rest of the facility, which is an operating room nurse. You really don't. You kind of just stay in our little hole and that's about it. So um, I think it's helped me get to where I am now as a nurse manager and um, I have really appreciated it. So I think a lot of nurses are probably interested in serving on a board or being more involved. What advice do you have for those that are considering service and what would be their best first steps? I think one important thing is just to get involved. If you're interested in an organization, go to a meeting, see what it's about. Um, even if you're not, if you don't know anybody, that's okay. Just go and see. Um, you really have to be active. You can't just kind of be one of those passive members that reads the newsletter. Um, you really have to get involved. So I would say that your first step is just go check it out. You never know what you might find. That's great advice. What are you most proud of from your involvement and board service? Um, I think one of the most, um, the best things that we provide as um, board members of AORN is continuing education for our nurses. Actually, have provided um, a couple of annual conferences, so we provide CEs at that. We also partner with um, our local vendors to give us uh, continuing education at meetings, and it's those are for free. So you come to a meeting and you get free continuing education, which is really hard to come by. So I think we've um, got a great partnership there and can provide that for our local nurses. That's great. So they kind of get something professionally from from coming in and being part of the organization Absolutely. as well. That's great. Uh, so you're a current WGU student. How has WGU prepared you for your career and for your board service? So I think WGU has really given me those leadership traits and the knowledge to go and apply it at um, my local facility, at AORN, um, as well serving on my board, especially when it comes to evidence-based practice. They've given me tools to go find evidence-based practice and how to share it appropriately and implement it in my facility. So I think that was one great benefit that I learned. Thank you. Amy, it's been great hearing your story and spending some time with you. Um, I'd like to just close, Amy, by thanking you and giving you an opportunity to share any advice that you may have with our audience about board service. I would just like to, to suggest that you get involved, that you take a leap of faith and just go check it out and see what it's about. You might really um, find somebody you connect with. You might find you like the organization um, and you can, you can really help others by serving on a board and being involved. And so it will be worthwhile for you personally and for your career. That's great, thank you. You're welcome. Now we'd like to open it up for Q&A. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat box now. Uh, we have received a few questions as the uh, presentation has gone on th this morning. Um, I'd like to, to acknowledge Heidi's comment that she mentioned that the healthcare system, her healthcare system actually has a, an NP on their board of directors and, and that's great. Kim, I'd like to ask you, how can nurses work together to get more, more board positions open to nurses? Well, one of the things you know that I, I think I shared earlier is that as we work in our communities and we're available to um, talk with individuals that are on groups that are other members of other boards, that we share with them the interest and what nurses could bring to the table. 
you know, I think it's important that we, we share what we would bring to the table. And as Nurses on Board's coalition as an entity, and then also at the state level is out doing that, each one of us as registered nurses in our communities can ask that question. You know, we all know of organizations that, and they all have boards for the most part. And so it's okay to ask those folks, you know, do we have, um, do you have the ability to bring additional people onto your board? And if so, you know, nurses make a great board member. You know, and you can share why they make a great board member. And then if you're interested in that board, you can follow that up with, and I'd be very interested. And if you, if it's not you, then, you know, we can help you find the person that would be interested. Because like I said, we have thousands of nurses across this country that want to serve on boards. And so finding them is the board opportunities is really important. But each one of us can do that by reaching out and talking to individuals um, that serve on boards to talk about when you're looking for a new board member and you're talking about replacing somebody, that that would it'd be great to look at bringing a nurse to that table. Another thing we can do is if we currently serve on a board, at some point in time, our um, tenure is kind of probably run out. You know, they're they are time limited for the most part in many boards. Some boards you can be on it forever if you wish, but some you have, you know, a th the ability to have two, three year terms or, you know, however it's broken out. And so when that happens and we serve on a board, we always want to be able to remember that we should replace ourselves by another nurse. And so always be looking for who that other nurse would be in our world that we think would be a good person to replace us as we go off of a board. Is that helpful? I think that's very helpful. I appreciate that. And I think, you know, there's been a lot of questions about how to get involved and to get on a board. And you you had the great with all of those resources. And to want to mention that this is recorded and we will send this out. So if you have other individuals are interested and have more questions, we can um, take those questions for the next webinar as well. Uh, another question uh, was about student nurses and, and if there's a place for student nurses on boards. There is, there's a place for all of us. And you know, in my mind, student nurses are nurses. They just they haven't taken the NCLAX yet. You know, they're, they're getting there. So absolutely, and you know, many of our student nurses are, you know, non-traditional students. They're not, you know, 19 years old or 18 year olds. And even the 18 and 19 year olds have a place on some particular board. So, you know, I think that's certainly a possibility. And I would never think that there is no opportunity for a, a nurse at any age or even a student at any age. But, you know, many of our student nurses in today's environment you know, our second degree um, individuals or second professions, you know, and, and they may be um, not, you know, fresh out of high school as they're going into their nursing programs. And so those individuals, you know, certainly have the ability to get involved um, at the board level. And we would encourage anybody that is in, in school to be a nurse to just figure this all out the same way the nurses are. And consider yourself a nurse from my perspective, because you are. You just haven't passed the NCLAX yet. Hi, Kim. I think you you bring up some good points, and also, uh, you know, students can bring a different perspective to that. So, thank you for that answer. Okay, we have a um, a three part question for you. Uh, the first is. What is the best way to begin to join committees boards at the state level? Um, this message, this is from Stephanie. Her ultimate goal is to work at the federal level to become influential and initiate change to the current tone of bedside nursing with staffing breaks, mandatory maximum hours worked per 24 hour period, violence in the workplace, um, and representing healthcare workers in general. So. That's just to name a few of the things that she's interested in. So where would you recommend that she could uh, get get started with that type of goal in mind? Well, my thoughts for that particular one is that, you know, in, in many instances, the a and is our representation um, for those kinds of things in nursing in America. And so I would definitely encourage the person to get involved at the state level. If the person is still a student, get involved in the National Student Nurses Association. It's a wonderful organization. Nursing students learn so many wonderful skills 
being involved in the boards at the state level for the student nurse organizations. And once you've graduated, get involved in your state nurses association, because those are the folks that are usually looking at the policy issues. And they're the ones that regularly interact with legislators on a regular basis. Um, they're the ones that bring or don't bring, you know, scope of practice issues to the legislature or staffing levels or, you know, whatever the issue may be. So I would encourage you to get very involved in that. Another thing I would encourage someone to do that really has aspirations for something at a national level with influencing policy is that um, in most states, there is usually an organized effort for the young, either Republicans or Democrats, and they have both in most every state, where they bring individuals in as into a leadership programs within those organizations. And we, you know, we all know that with many of our organized efforts for really making a difference at the national level, it's going to happen through legislation. And so getting involved in the state legislature is going to have to happen. So those are great ways to get involved in the, to be prepared to get involved into, in the state legislature. So those programs prepare people to, you know, really run for office and to learn about what's in your community and what's important in your community and how legislation works. And so those would be great opportunities. Um, going to Hill Days, you know, through your organizations, you know, is another way. Most of the national organizations and many of the state organizations do days at the, on the Hill. At the national organization, they go to the Hill in Washington. You know, at the state level, they go to um, the state capitol and they talk with legislators. Get involved in those. Um, the nurse um, executives mostly do that. The nurse practitioners mostly do that. So many of our organized nursing um, organizations and efforts have a legislative day. So I would encourage people to get involved at that level if your ultimate goals are to be, you know, at the national level, making the decisions or helping to influence the decisions um, for advocacy at the national level. Another one is find a mentor. You know, in most states, there's somebody that's a nurse that's involved with legislation. I could pretty much guarantee you that that nurse who is a legislator would love to talk to you and would be more than willing to have you come and meet with that person, especially when they're not in session and they're not quite so busy. But connect to those folks. Let those people be mentors to you. You know, it, it, oftentimes it's so much about not, not what we know, but who we know, because by who we know, we get to know a whole lot more because they will share information with us and teach us things. So finding a mentor that's currently in one of those kind of roles is another great way. Thanks, Kim. Uh, that was very great um, Q&A session. I know there were questions. We didn't have the opportunity to get to. We will save those and bring those up in our next next webinar. And they can also reach out to Kim or Laurie. Their information is is on the screen now. Um, I want to make sure that you all mark your calendars for our second webinar in this three part series that will be on July seventeenth. During that webinar, we will discuss with what you need to know about serving on multiple boards or at multiple levels of boards. And keep your eyes peeled for an email, email from us with the link to register for that, as well as the recording of this video. Thank you all for attending.